What's going on? This is the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We are here in Detroit, Michigan with a special guest. We have Brian Young here. What's going on, Brian? It's all great. Downtown Detroit. We're also uh, joined by Paige Walters, yeah. our marketing director. So Brian, give us a little bit of background here. Give us some context. What's your, what's your swimming story, as they would say? Well, I grew up uh, swimming, you know, summers at the swim club, swam in high school. Um, just enjoy it, you know, for now yeah, health, fitness. Uh, do a lot of triathlon uh, swimming now, uh, that swimming component. And uh, it's an exciting time of the year. We're getting, everyone's getting ready for the race season and, you know, triathlon season. Swimmers are out there in open water. It's a good time to talk about, uh, you know, what, what some of the differences are with open water swimming, with pool swimming, and, uh, and, and how to be equipped. Yeah, so awesome. like, let's, let's talk more about your swimming. So what's your routine look like right now? Like, how many times per week are you swimming? Uh, walk us through it. Uh, I'm, you know, it changes week to week. I, I'd say I average probably three to four times a week. Uh, so I'm in about 3,500 yards or so. Um, yeah, you know, follow, using the uh, My Swim Pro app, of course. Uh, premium subscriber and uh, yeah so it keeps me on track so you mentioned triathlon so like what swim bike run right so what's like what triathlons have you done like distance like sprint Olympic like what what have you competed in yeah I've, I've done all of them uh, sprint Olympic half iron uh, full iron distance races what's the Ironman for people who don't know like what's the, distance the, the, the full Ironman is uh, uh, you start off with a uh, 2.4 mile swim and then a 112 mile bike and then oh a God. full marathon, 26.2 oh miles. Oh so that's incredible. Yeah, you know, like anything else, though, you train for it. You know, you can prepare for it, and uh, but it, it's a it's a nice accomplishment to get into that. How many how many Ironmans or halves have you done? Uh, I you know to be honest, I don't really keep track. I've done two yeah. two full Iron two Distance full, races. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, a lot of halves. I find personally for myself, uh, with a two-year-old, five-year-old, and seven-year-old at home. Yeah and a wife at home that it fits my schedule a little bit more mm. the half distance and, and I can race a little bit more often that way. So yeah. you've, got, you've got a family, you've got a job, like how do you manage training with all of those different things? Like what's, how does yeah. the schedule work I think I, you, you try to fit it in where you can, uh, you make it a part of your life, and, uh, but you have to be a little bit flexible and know that sometimes uh, it doesn't work out the way you want to, but uh, you, you move on and yeah. at the end of the day it's a, it's a hobby and it's something that's fun and, and uh, but you've got to be flexible. Your kids are getting into it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. My kids are uh, swimming this summer, and awesome. and, uh, and and one of them's doing uh, some triathlon uh, type events, so he's excited, and uh, it's a lot of fun for everyone. Cool. So let's talk about open water swimming, right? So if we're talking about a triathlon, swim, bike, run, swim is the first part. What do you think is like? Cause a lot of people are intimidated by the swim, especially in triathlon. Like, why do you think people are maybe intimidated and what are some things that help overcome that intimidation? Well, you know, I think you've talked about this in some of your other uh, 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 sessions, but, you know, I think a lot of times the open water uh, temperature is a lot cooler than what people are used to swimming sure. indoors when they're yep. training. And so uh, for people who aren't very experienced swimmers, you, you get a lot of times people uh, have anxiety. They jump in yeah. a water and it's also you're starting with a lot of people in a, either chaos. a wave the washing or... Machine. It's yes. Yeah. And so I think that that's something that, and it's hard to simulate unless you're practicing in that yeah. sort of a, a, an environment. So I think, you know, people get anxious and, and uh, it's something you got to be ready for uh, when you get out there to race. All right, so sure. we're, we're going to go right into the wetsuit discussion. So wetsuits help, obviously, with the temperature. Um, maybe let's talk about that. What, what, what do you think, besides temperature and maybe with temperature, what are the biggest benefits of having a wetsuit yeah. in an open water or triathlon? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest benefits, number one, like you say, is temperature. If you're swimming in really cold water, uh, the neoprene of a wetsuit is going to give you some yeah. warmth. Right. Um, and uh, so, so that's helpful for a lot of people. Mm. I think another thing that, that it gives you is buoyancy. buoyancy so a lot yeah, of people, yeah. especially people who aren't, uh, you know, very comfortable swimming mm. uh, open water, uh, will get a benefit from a wetsuit because it keeps you on top of the water with yeah. the, uh, the neoprene. So um, you'll float a little bit easier, yeah. and you're uh, going to be faster because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and just because of the fact that uh, the, the way the wetsuits are built, uh, typically you will be faster, mm -hmm. and so there's speed how component much faster, as well. Like how much faster are we talking about? Like what? So okay, so we have a wetsuit. Yeah. Let's talk about this wetsuit, and you can tell us like, why you're explaining some of the 
components of it, like what? Sure. Well, this is a matter. this is a Zone Three Vanquish wetsuit here, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this is a the high end uh, wetsuit from Zone Three. Why is it high end? Like, what what makes it high end? Like, what? Well, I think the the type of neoprene. This is the best neoprene on the market. Uh, What's it's, the material it's made It's on? a it's a neo uh, forty cell uh, Yamamoto uh, uh, neoprene, and up mm -hmm. in the shoulder area where you want that flexibility, mm -hmm. it's one point five millimeters thick. Is that what the, the arms are? Yeah, the arms 1. and 5. the and the back and the chest. Yep. Um, but uh, in the hips and the uh, this area here. It's five millimeters, which is the most mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, five millimeter neoprene, which is the the, the most you can have in a triathlon. Yep. So that will function to keep your your hips on top mm -hmm. of the water, mm -hmm. so you'll swim fast. Um, yep. And and but you want the flexibility up in the the shoulders and chest, so yep. that you can breathe easily, and mm -hmm. you can also be able to move your shoulder, uh, you know, shoulders with mm -hmm. flexibility and not feel constricted. So why why is it 1.5 here, and then like why is it very different thicknesses of the neoprene. Yeah, I mean, not all wetsuits do that, but, but I, I, the, 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 yeah, the reason that, that it varies is because uh, you're, you're able to. If you get a good wetsuit, yeah. it will have that. You, you don't want to be swimming with five millimeter neoprene mm. in the shoulder because it will Can't fatigue move. you yeah. and you won't be able to feel like you're moving uh, as easily. Right, right, right. So, you know. So what, um, is there a difference between like your season or what the temperature is of the water and what kind of wetsuit you wear? On that. So I think you know if you're swimming in open water, uh, in open water, you're going to get a variety of temperatures. If yep. in, in in real cold uh, water, you want to wear a wetsuit if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, you Would get you go to thicker though. Uh, no, I, I think that most people, if you're, I mean, you're going to get so cold that you wouldn't mm -hmm. swim. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can get so cold that that's the case. Um, but in normal temperatures, you know, even you know, 60 degrees water, mm -hmm. I would I would throw my wetsuit on. And, and you know it yeah. might uh, sting when you put your face in right, first, so but you'll it, you'll get used to it. Yeah. So okay. So in the back, there's a zipper, yep. which is not my swimsuits don't have a zipper. Uh, <laughs> so what? So you got like talk to me about what the design mechanics and then like what this is. Yeah. Like, what's so what what happens is when you put your wetsuit on. This is good information because the first triathlon I did, I. Uh, put the wetsuit on all the way, it took me about five minutes to get the thing on, and then a guy tapped me on the shoulder and reminded me that the zipper goes in the back. Oh God. And not in the front, which is the way I had it. It's a very yeah. common mistake, don't do that. And I was standing in front of my God. wife at the time, and, and uh, oh, no. I, she, she hasn't let me forget that experience yet. Oh, no. But anyway, for all of you uh, listeners, zip, uh, zipper in the back, yeah, zipper and you kind of uh, roll down the, the top here, yep. and you slip your, your leg in, other leg yep. in, yep. and you kind of you know work, work it little by little up your legs, over your hips, and then you uh, slowly you know, put the arms in, each arm, and uh, work it over your shoulders, the neoprene, and then uh, some, some people can zip up the uh, back of the, the wetsuit. Right? Yep, and you, you can pull the cord here Take up to the off. top, and sometimes it, there's nothing wrong with having somebody help you in yep. the back also yep. zip yep. it up. And then when you finish your swim part of your race, mm -hmm. you get out of the water, and uh, you you know as you're running to transition, you would uh, remove the, the there's a velcro piece at the top, and then you can take that um, that cord and pull down. And usually on the way to transition, you would yeah. get the wetsuit down to your your waist, get your arms out, so it's really easy to slip it off yep. and uh, go as quickly as possible. Can you tell us about the panels on the arms? Yeah, so the the arm panels here, you can see that this is a. Uh, a, a cool zone here, this blue area. It's a cool zone. It, it's so what, what what that is is you want you know when you're when you have your wetsuit on, and you're um, you're pulling through your stroke, you'll feel it. It will um, give you a little bit more feedback on your forearm. So as you're pulling, you want to feel that the cool uh, water, so you know you're pulling back in the right direction, and yep, yep, yep. and uh, you can kind of test your stroke that way. It also looks really cool, like. It's, you feel like you're a superhero, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, is it Batman? Do I want to be Batman or Spider-Man today? That's kind of the... That's right. The That's question. right. But, you know, there's, there's a buoyancy panel in the, in the chest here. And, uh, and these speed cuffs here help you get the wetsuit off really quickly. They kind yeah. of snap off your legs yep. so you can uh, get onto your bike right. and do the rest of the race. So we have another... This is a different suit now. Let's talk, tell me about what is the difference yes. between... If, you can't feel it, but like describe the difference in... Mm -hmm. Material, yep. um, stretchiness. So, all so, that so stuff. sometimes when you're you're swimming in open water, the temperature is so warm that the uh, the race won't let you wear wetsuits. Mm -hmm. Or maybe sometimes yeah. they'll make the wetsuits optional, but Not you won't be able to qualify for awards. 
So in, yeah. in, real, in warmer open water swims, what you can use is a um, swim skin. And mm -hmm. this is the Zone 3 Kona-inspired yep. uh, sleeved swim skin, which Kona. is our top... What's Kona? What's Kona? <laughs> in Hawaii. For the fans who don't know about <laughs> right, Kona. Right, that's where the World Championships is held. And uh, a lot of our, our pro athletes at Zone 3 are, are using uh, this, uh, uh, this swim skin. And it's, what's nice is it's very tight, fits you tight, but it's supposed to. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, but it's also very... You'll be, you'll be flexible and, and uh, unconstricted in your yeah. movement. And, uh, and, and this thing, while it doesn't give you the same buoyancy that neoprene will give yeah. you, it, uh, it does help you move quickly through the water. So if you're able to wear something like this, it's great. And we, we have a, a sleeve version like this. Mm -hmm. We also have sleeveless uh, swim skins what's, as well. What's the difference between like, so this wetsuit is like, it covers your arms all the way to here. Yep. And your legs. I've seen some that are sleeveless. Yep, we have right, sleeveless so wetsuits. It's preference. a personal preference. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously if it's a sleeveless wetsuit, you're not going to have neoprene here. So yeah. you won't get the benefit of that extra uh, and the cold panel, right? You're not float and the yeah. cold panel and um, and the warmth. But uh, but some and, and sometimes people like the feeling of, mm -hmm. of just not having anything over their arms. Yeah. So for those people, it, it you know, that can make sense too. Yeah, so it's mainly like some people feel like it, it might be a little too constricted or it's, you know, yeah, it too just, much Yeah, it just depends. It's a yeah. personal, preference. personal preference. Some people only that. swim sleeveless. Some people, mm -hmm. now if you get a really good wetsuit, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you should be able to wear a full sleeve and not feel constricted. Yep. Yep. Um, 1.5 millimeters. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's a nice feel. So what's the difference? I know they're very different, but between like a tech suit and like a wetsuit pool. like this. Yeah. yeah. So a pool wetsuit versus this. Yeah, well, I, I think I think Ferris could probably help uh, answer some of that. I, I think well, the, the they're very similar. This one actually, the uh, this one, the material is very similar to what a yep. tech suit would be. It's non permeable. So like if you're in if you're in like a pool competition sanctioned by FINA or USA Swimming, it has the suit is 100% non permeable um, or permeable. Yeah, so you can't have a, a suit that's made out of polyurethane. And the polyurethane is the thing that makes you float. So for like open water, when you have a wetsuit that's 1.5 to 5 millimeters of neoprene, I mean that's giving you added buoyancy. So like you're going to swim faster, and you don't get that in a pool tech suit. I think another big difference is that you can reuse these, and they're not gonna go yeah. the life. There's a lifespan. And a yeah. pool tech suit. I mean after the first race, it's immediately slower, and then it just de degrades very quickly. This, this is you know different. Teflon coated. It, it's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of uh, cool. You throw water on it, and it just beads up beads and up. rolls off. Oh. Rolls but, even, off. but even like the this wetsuit, right? I mean you can wear it multiple suits oh, yeah. over and over, and it's gonna feel just as good as the first time. Yep. Sure. Compared right. to a pool suit, it's not, not gonna I work. Think, and the wetsuits too are designed, I mean, they'll last you season after season, yeah. um, you know. Oh, another thing, how, how long do you think you can put, like if you're going fast, how fast can you put on a wetsuit and take a wetsuit off? I think that's a big difference too. Uh, yeah, I think you, like anything, you get better at it yeah, as yeah. you, uh, uh, as practice. you do it, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. but you, you can get a wetsuit on uh, relatively quickly. I think I know where you're going with the yeah, tech yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it takes you quite a while to, <laughs> yeah, to get it on. And and this also the swim skin. It takes yeah, a little yeah. bit of work, and you want to be cautious. You don't want to put a, a finger uh, yeah, you know you uh, through it. Yeah. But um, but you as long as you're cautious and you get it on, you know that's what's nice, and especially in triathlon. Swimming is the first uh, thing you do. So yeah. just wake up earlier. You have more time to get it yeah. on. Well, even even taking it off. So, like in the transition, like I've taken yeah. a wetsuit off in like 30 seconds. Oh yeah, you, you know, can get these off a, a quickly. A tech suit, especially if you're a girl, like you oh can. It's like a guy, even a jammer to put on might take 15 minutes, and then taking it off might take, you know, over a minute. Just just you know, a small mm -hmm. piece of fabric. And girls' side, I mean, how, how long to take? It takes like 10 minutes to take it off. <laughs> but it but it, it definitely is worth uh, doing. I mean, I know myself, just my my own uh, experience, a, a good wetsuit. You feel like I, I, I think it was like 10 seconds per hundred faster yeah, I mean, in the in the in the water. I mean, it's insane. crazy. It's talking about 10 to 20 percent time yeah. improvements. And and the the uh, the the uh, swim skin isn't going to give you quite as much advantage because yeah. you don't have the neoprene. But It'll they say you, you know that's six seconds, five seconds, whatever. It'll it but make you faster. it helps. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's cool. talk about open water swimming. We have what is this? I think a lot of swimmers have seen this, but they might not know <laughs> what this is. Kind of give us like yeah. the overview of what's what's what is this? So I know, I know from for personally uh, when I go into the open water, whether I'm with a group or if I'm l alone, I always take a uh, a safety uh, swim buoy with safety me buoy. Okay. Uh, because <clears throat> for a few reasons. Number one, uh, what you do, you blow the thing up, um, 
and before you blow it up, you can stick your keys, your wallet, your cell phone inside of it. Put a sandwich in there. And <laughs> sandwich, a fuel, sandwich. midway, <laughs> right. Uh, but you can do that, and then you blow the thing up, and uh, there's a waist uh, strap. This goes on and your you waist. Put it on your waist. Buckled in. I'm buckling myself yep. in. Yep. All right. And uh, you better remember to give it to me back. Ferris. I'm about to go for a swim right now, guys. All right, so but, I'm buckled in. But yeah, so and then you let, just let this thing hang and, and, and follow you in the water. So you basically pull it, pull it behind you. Yeah, and you don't. Swimming. And it, and it's uh, you'd think that it's going to drag or something. It, you don't feel it at all, uh, but it drags behind you. And um, and it number one, it allows you to be seen. Yeah, so if safety. you're with a group if, and people are trying to stay with you, they can pick their head up, sight, see where you are at all yep. time. Um, the other thing, obviously, if there's boats or traffic in the water, you want to be seen yeah. um, so you don't get hit. Um, it, uh, another benefit is to be able to store stuff in it. And uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and the, the last thing I'd say is, you know, we're, everyone's different uh, degrees of proficiency in the water. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, you know, you had a cramp or yeah. something happens unexpectedly right. and you need to take a break or have something to lean on, yeah. it's nice to have something to throw an arm over and take a little break if you need it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So it's a safety thing. Cool. I think that's, I mean, a use case might be you're swimming and you're a really strong swimmer, but then for whatever reason you're dehydrated and you're like, your hamstring straight sure. up locks up. Or, we, were, or we've all had it with a, with a foot, you know, a, a foot, foot cramp, cramp yeah. or yeah. a calf. Cramp. Yeah. You just hang on to this and just chill and then recover yourself. Yeah. The safety part's really important though. I mean, also you want to be cautious of where you're swimming. If you're in a busy river or a busy outlet where there's a lot of boats, that can be like, would you also recommend swimming with a kayaker next to you or a boat or? Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it just depends. It depends what what you're what you have available to you. Um, yeah. I, I I would prefer swimming with someone uh, yeah. just so you've got each other to you know uh, you know yeah. keep each boaters, other safe. Boaters don't always. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you got a kayak guy a guy or a woman who's going to kayak next to you, you may have to treat him to lunch afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. Yeah. All right. So we have some more some more goodies here. Let's. Uh, so what are, what are these? These are some goggles, right? And let's, yeah. Like, so they're optional, but goggles are strongly encouraged. Sure, <laughs> sure. And, and, you know, there's different types of goggles. We've, it, it's Zone 3. We've got uh, our award-winning uh, Volare goggle, which is it, it, a lot of our pro athletes use for mm -hmm. racing, uh, open water. But, but yep. really, they're designed to be a pool uh, race goggle that are low profile. These are uh, here are the uh, TAC goggle, which is a polarized goggle. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that there's a wide field of vision. So it helps you in open water. When you pick your head up, you can sight, see everything that's around sighting. you. Right, we talked about sighting before, but yep. really quick, well, how do you describe the concept of sighting and why it's important in well, open water? Yeah, well, you don't have a lane line, uh, a blue or black line to follow on the bottom yeah. of the pool because it's not a pool. Yeah. Uh, but you have landmarks or you, you may have a, a, you know, someone that you're trying to follow and uh, you want to be able to pick your head up and know that you're swimming straight yep. or towards your, where you're trying to go. Yeah, yeah. And so the more you can see around you is helpful. Also in a race in open water, you might want to know where people are around you if yeah. someone's bumping into you in the sure. washing machine or whatever. So these, these are great, uh, very comfortable uh, eye gaskets. Uh, they fit your face well. So these are very popular. And then for open water also, these are um, our vapor goggle, which is yeah. also a polarized lens. It's even a little bit larger than these, but some people like that larger fit and uh, for sighting purposes. And, yep. and uh, you know, you just want to make sure that there's a seal and you can adjust the straps. Yep. Ferris, you look pretty good with those. I feel like Spider-Man. <laughs> I, need, I need to put the wet suit on and then I'll yeah. be, actually, I want to be Batman, but spider I think these are more Spider-Man. That's right. Look. So what, what are the key differences? It looks like, I mean, these have a lot more, you know, bigger suction. It also has a much wider lens. Yep. Um, and when you say you want to be able to look and see what's going on around you, it's because of that bigger lens, right? Compared yeah. to like a regular kind of pool goggle, where it's a little more, uh, I don't know, cutting in a little on the sides. Uh -huh. It's going to give you like a wide range. Yeah, I, I think in the pool you're not so you're not as concerned about what's going on around you. You want to focus yeah. on you know looking down and seeing the lane line and and you know which direction you're going. Um, I think with, with these, I think it comes down to personal preference. Some people like having a larger frame or maybe their face is such, if they have a large face, that it, it, it's a better fit. Um, you know, and then this is a little bit smaller. Um, and, and then, you know, some of the, uh, more, the smaller, lower profile goggles may be yep. best for a smaller face. Yep. What about um, having a darker lens in like dark open water? So mm. is that, 
Because I know if you're outside, it's nice to have a darker lens with the sun. Uh -huh. But do people have, like, are there different options for if you swim in, like, a really clear water versus dark water, if that makes a difference? Yeah, I don't know if that's so. I, I, I do it more on, you know, w what you have uh, with the sun or if it's yeah. overcast. Okay. And, and I think uh, a lot of our goggles are, mm -hmm. they'll have a mirror, but uh, our goggles, I don't feel like the mirror makes them so dark that they don't work indoors or, yeah. or if there's not a lot of sunlight. Um, and, and yet, if there is heavy sunlight, they're not so light mm -hmm. that, you, you know, you, you, they're, they're they work very well in, yeah. in sunlight. So um, it's a kind of a good middle ground. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend wearing these, like if you're training in a pool for an open water race, would you wear these like the whole time you're training in a pool? Uh, yeah, you, so you could. We, the, yeah. This is a strong preference of some people that, you know, for pool also. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I personally doing. use the attack goggles mm -hmm. when I train. Um, but I, I do think that's and race. Is, you know, if you're training in a pool, you should be uh, incorporating like all the gear you're going to be using in open water a little bit. You know? Oh yeah, testing and out, and make can... and make sure you're testing out the stuff you're going to use in a race because yeah. the, the, the the big rule that everyone talks about is you never do anything for the first time in a race. In a race. Yeah. yeah, you want to practice with it. Yeah, that's right. You practice sighting in the pool pretty easily. You know, yeah. every four, six, eight strokes, whatever. You can lift your head up, sight, spot a cone on the side of the pool, or if you want to be really challenging or make it really hard for yourself, you can have a person walking on the side of the pool and you try and spot the coach um, in between the walls, which is a really helpful tip for open water training as well. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so if someone's, they want to get into an open water race or triathlon, but the swim itself, what's to decide or not, like what, what advice could you offer or encouragement to get them like, hey, you just, Let's, let's do it. You got to do this. Yeah, I, w I would start off um, start off small. You know, there's there's a ton of sprint races uh, all over the place nowadays. Get into something uh, in a body of water that's comfortable for you. So you know, I've got some friends this weekend uh, swimming, doing the Escape from Alcatraz uh, oh, cool. triathlon, and wow. it's a great race. That's a little bit more. That's awesome. Yeah. But but like I was saying, you know, there's a heavy current there. You you're know what you're, doing. you're swimming with uh, marine life. Yeah. Of different types, that's so not your beginner Alcatraz. Right. Alcatraz is like second year. That's right. Second that's year. right. Yeah. So yeah, but get into something, and they, they have they have um, triathlons now that are that are actually uh, indoors for uh, the swim. So you can start there if you're more comfortable. But if you're looking to get into open water, find something that's a distance that's appropriate for you, mm -hmm. um, and and in a body of water that you're comfortable with, and uh, it's a good way to get get involved. Nice. And you'll do it the first time, and then you'll you'll be itching to do it again. Sweet. So if you guys have any questions or tips for open water swimming, whether it's in the pool or uh, I guess you can't do open water swimming in the pool. Uh, but if you have any tips <laughs> on practice. open water training in the pool or, or otherwise, leave them in the comments. And if you have any questions, we'll, we'll get back to all of those questions. Yeah. And I want to thank our uh, resident open water expert <laughs> and wetsuit expert, Brian Young, for joining the show. Super insightful. Um, yeah, thanks again for taking oh, the time. My, Thank you. My, uh, my pleasure. And, and if you want to check out any of the stuff we talked about, you can see it we'll at... put a uh, link in the description. Yeah, yeah. Um, sounds great. Well, thank you very much for having me, you guys. Right. So that's yeah. the Ask a Swim thank Pro you. Show. You have questions, we have answers. We'll see you guys next time.